we released it, or when we premiered it at New York, it, it was the first time I actually felt that almost I saw the film. Because as a filmmaker, you know, I believe in um, that, that cinema is a, is a you know, public experience. I mean, I really, that for me, the film is complete when it's seen by people in a, in a theater. And we had done screenings, but they were rel relatively small because we were trying to keep, you know, the, the circle tight. And so I actually felt like I saw it for the first time at, at New York, which was what, unique. What did, that, what did that reveal to you? And, and actually, what has been <laughs> revealed to you in the, you know, in the process yeah. of screening it, I'm sure, you know, you know, dozens of times in the last, in the last three yeah. months. I mean, a, a, a number of things. The, I think one of the biggest surprises was was, um, we knew that there was humor in the film, but but it actually, once there was a uh, an audience and people, you know, saw what was going on between between Snowden and Glenn, and then the humor kind of came to the foreground in a way that it doesn't in, when you're doing um, smaller screenings, and that was one of the uh, the the big sort of learning experiences that we had when we premiered it. And in terms of you know, it's like you know, what effect was there, you know, after you. Know, have, have you been contacted by the government? Have you know? It's like what kind of reaction has there been? Is it radio silence? What is? What's that been like? So there, it's been radio silence, um, uh, but of course um, that's has been a concern throughout working on this reporting was whether or not the government would do anything to try to either stop the reporting or to 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 stop the film. Um, but uh, but there's been no um, effort to contact me directly um, regarding the film or any of the reporting. So after I returned, um, uh, I was, I'm, I've been based in Berlin um, doing the reporting. So after um, Glenn and I were in Hong Kong, I went back to Berlin and um, and there wasn't any, you know, we, we know that there were meetings in the government about what to do about the reporting and, and, you know, obviously you see that David Miranda was detained in the UK, so there was certainly, you know, um, the government was, was, was trying to figure out if there was a way to contain um, the journalism that we were doing, but I was never contacted. How did you feel about this in terms of it being a piece of reportage versus, uh, you know, as a, and a film? Because it's very clearly this is, you know, this is a... This is a very composed film work. At the same time, you know, you have this, you know, responsibility as a journalist. The whole reason for making the film is because of the, you know, the information you're trying to feel. How did you, you know, how did you try to balance those two out? Yeah, I mean, as a, you know, I, I, as a documentary filmmaker, I mean, I think it's, um, it's I, I mean, I consider that the work that we do is journalism, but it's journalism and filmmaking and and I always consider myself really that if the film that if I make a film what I wanted to do is work as a film not just as journalism I mean that if films don't exist to break news I mean there are other venues to do that um, which isn't to say that you don't have to go through all the sort of journalistic process in terms of fact checking and making sure that the information in the film is is accurate but um you know, I've been working, I've been making Cinema Verte films, and Cinema Verte, for those who don't know it, is a tradition of filmmaking where you, um, you, f you film events as they're unfolding in real time. And um, it's sort of begun by D.A. Pennybaker and Albert Maisels, um, and then y you, you craft a story. And when you're in the um, process of making the film, you actually, you're as, un the, there's as much uncertainty um, that you experience as a filmmaker as the the people you're filming because you actually don't know what's going to happen next and um, and I've really, I really I I love that kind of filmmaking because it, it's sort of it's a window into humanity that I think is really rare um, and so I think in this case it was a pretty extraordinary circumstance to sort of be in a hotel room as this journalistic encounter. Snowden unfolded. even says that he even yeah. says he says it's such a strange feeling you not to know what's going to happen the next hour or the next day yeah. but it's also kind of liberating. Yeah. Right, right. And so, and I very much felt that. So it was, you know, like there was a sense of drama and tension that I brought into all of the reporting that hopefully finds its way into the film because it's very present um, when, I was, when I was making it. Um, and I think that, you know, that this, um, it, it, it actually is also a, um, a piece of journalism. I mean, it's a, it's a document about a journalistic encounter that happened in this hotel room. So, and it's, but it's also very much crafted. I mean, I'm interested in, in cinema. I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, consider myself a, a, a filmmaker first. Um, so it's, but there is this constant balance. But I'm very interested in, in how with cinema verte filmmaking you can both craft narratives, but also um, document history as it unfolds. And so I made a film about the Iraq War, and it, it's very much about what is, what was the occupation like. Um, uh, in you know 2004 2005, so it's a, it's a document. I mean, it's it's history, but it's also um, crafted as a narrative. Well, it's you know, it's a really interesting contrast in terms of you know the contrast to the way that you know certainly any 
um, big budget film or you know, effects driven film is like they're storyboarded within an inch of their, of their lives. And this is the antithesis of that. I mean, it's like, do, do you have any greater comfort now that you've done enough cinema verite or you trust like, okay, the story will be there or is it a question of like, holy crap, now what? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of <laughs> that um, and uncertainty that you just don't know where, where it's going. And, um, uh, but I also have been doing it a while. It becomes a space that I'm relatively familiar with. Like, don't know where this is going, but I, you know, I, I'm uh, along for the ride. And uh, in this case, it was pretty clear that um, that once, you know, th there was a lot of uncertainty when I was receiving the emails, you know, who knows if this person was really going to come forward and if they would meet and if there would actually be documents. But once I was in the hotel room, I, I definitely felt that my sort of experience in the past kind of kicked in because I was definitely... Um, really experienced a lot of nervousness. I was, I really felt like that, that we, anything could happen at any moment. And, um, and I just kind of had to, you know, lean on the fact that I've been doing this for a while and that I, you know, will hopefully get the, the material I need to, when I go back and, and edit the film. Um, and then when I went back to Berlin, I definitely wanted to um, continue to, uh, film the reverberations. I mean, the way that we thought about the film was this kind of concentric circles, that there was this sort of core event, which was what happened in, in Hong Kong, and that there were sort of ripple effects that sort of emanate out of it, and that we we actually didn't want the film to have what is ca called like a third act resolution, like that we didn't want it to feel like that there's closure, because we actually think that there aren't, there isn't closure, and that, that w the, the impact of what happened there will continue to uh, reverberate into the future. And so we wanted the film to sort of, you know, push out into, you know, n not have a feeling of closure at the end. Did you have a greater sense of, you know, again, from based on your experience of prior films, it was like in terms of your own anxiety and paranoia. I mean, I, I've talked to you before about this in terms of like you just, at this point, you're used to the fact, okay, they're going to check me at the border, they're going to detain me, this is just comes to the territory. Is this, you know, or, you know, what, how heightened was that in, you know, in this process? I mean, this film, it really went through waves. I mean, there was probably a year of really, really intense, like, anxiety that I felt. I mean, and that began when I started receiving the emails because it just it kicked in, like, if I knew the, um, the magnitude of what I was hearing and that if there were actually documents that were going to substantiate these claims, um, that, uh, that, that really powerful people would be angered. Um, and that, the, and that the reporting was going to be difficult. And, um, and so, and then after Hong Kong being in Berlin, there, was, there were several months where I, you know, I was, I was you know, pretty, pretty worried about what might happen next. And that now it seems a bit more um, calm, um, but, which isn't to say it's normal, but, uh, but I think I've both a combination of become used to a certain, you know, expectation um, uh, that, for instance, um, I don't really trust that my email is that private, and those kinds of things. I, I have to assume that I'm under electronic surveillance. Uh, physical surveillance was probably more likely in the first months after, um, after f finishing in Hong Kong. How long did it take you to really trust Snowden in terms of, because you know, in terms of this, you know, at this point he's, you know, rel relatively speaking, his household name. Right. He was just this encrypted person on your computer. And it's very, to me, one of the bits of comedy comes from when you can just see this look in Glenn's eyes in the hotel room initially. It's like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and it, you know, it takes a little while for it to kind of break through. It's like, yeah. no, this is really happening. This is really true. So what was that, what was that process like for you? Yeah, I mean, um, when I've, I first received, started receiving emails in, in January 2013, and, um, and I was a bit taken aback by them. Um, I, I, I was, some of things went through my head. I said, okay, could this be an entrapment effort? Um, you know, I figured that since I'd been on a watch list and stopped at the border so many times, could there be some sort of entrapment? And it was a little bit mysterious why I was being contacted because, you know, I'm a, I'm a visual journalist, documentary filmmaker, and this was clearly, um, uh, you know, material for, for a newsroom and for print reporting. Um, but, but then it made sense. I mean, it, the way he answered the questions. I mean, I said, you know, how do I know you're not trying to entrap me? How do I know, you know, why are you contacting me? How do I know you're not crazy? I mean, I just asked him lots of questions. And, um, and he was, you know, very forthcoming. And he said, you know, I know that you're working on, on um, uh, the uh, reporting on the NSA because I had published something in the New York Times about it. Um, so he had heard about it that way. And it, he actually said that because I had been subjected to this watch list process was one of the reasons where he felt that I 
would understand how to um, why these th why these questions mattered. Um, and he also said, you know, I'm never going to ask anything you of you, like as in terms of entrapment, you know, to sort of make me um, feel that that wasn't what was happening. And but I trusted him pretty early, even though I remained, you know, um, skeptical or, or on alert for anything that seemed suspicious. <laughs>